And now we are going to um, hear our uh, three companies uh, for an opening speech. And the opening speech will be a global presentation of uh, microelectronic. And uh, they will be able to uh, tell you where they are involved in the value chain. So when will we be equipped with the uh, headsets they will come on, on stage? So we, we thought it would be interesting to start uh, this uh, conference with uh, back to basic, what's semiconductor, what's behind microelectronics. Uh, and so we decided to do this presentation, three voices from uh, ST Microelectronics, Soitech, and from Linred. So uh, what we'll look at in this presentation, we'll first show you that it's everywhere, and it was already said, there, I mean, there is nothing that, we, that would work today without chips, without microelectronics. We'll look at uh, the value chain from wafer to dice, have a broad view of that so that you understand exactly how it works. The markets, that's the microelectronic can serve, and then join us, exclamation point. That's for all the students. There is a lot of things interesting to do here in the field, so, and uh, that will be explained is microelectronic is fun. And then we'll uh, look at uh, all the European uh, uh, funding schemes that we have in Europe to help uh, development in the field, IPCI, obviously, KDT, CHIPS Act, and so on. And we'll wrap up with the IPCI and semiconductor rendezvous to remind you why we are here, what really this conference is about, and what is coming as well. So in everything, everywhere, the first uh, IPCI on microelectronic was divided in technology fields. That was explained. There are five, five fields. And if you look at the, at the title, energy efficient chips, power semiconductor, sensors, advanced optical equipment, component materials, there is a lot behind these titles, a lot of application that can be served. Obviously, energy efficient chips, it's for uh, preserving uh, the environment and using less energy. Power semiconductors are used for mobility applications. Sensors, sensors are everywhere. You, don't, you can't do anything without getting information first before acting. Uh, advanced optical equipment, that's basically all the uh, equipment manufacturers for semiconductors. And finally, compound materials. Microelectronics is more than just silicon. Silicon is probably the king of uh, semiconductors. 99% of, uh, of chips are made of silicon, but there, there is a lot more that we can do. Other semiconductors that are possible with uh, group two, three, five, and six, and there is also a sector dedicated to this in the IPCI. So enabling, enabling applications everywhere. As was said, uh, semiconductors are everywhere. It's in your cars, in the factories, in the city as well, and in your everyday life. And if we go a little further uh, in detail, it's used as well. And here, there are a lot of infrared examples. Uh, <laughs> the, the slide is from me. <laughs> Defense, obviously. Uh, predictive maintenance, you can see high temperature elements. Uh, I don't know if there is a laser, yeah. Uh, in an uh, electric uh, board. Building inspection as well. Quality control, you can see uh, contaminants when you look at rice, for example, here. Firefighting, you can see through smoke with infrared. Surveillance, night and day, you can see what's going on. Uh, outdoor activities, space, we'll talk about space as well. Infrared is very useful in space for environment and for, uh, for climate uh, monitoring. More applications that are possible thanks to uh, semiconductors. Smart buildings uh, inf with infrared as well. We can uh, monitor people in, uh, in buildings, how many they are, and adapt everything based on the, on the population in the, in the building. Uh, medical, I mean, there is too many uh, to, to say everything. 
But uh, it's just for you to get the idea, semiconductor is everywhere. And so from wafer to dice, uh, it's easy to talk about uh, chips. Well, that's the end result. That's what is used in all the, the, the tools we, we, we use. But how is, it, how is it made? It comes from wafers first, and this is one. And wafers themselves comes from bulk material. They are sliced from bulk material uh, into substrate. Then on the substrate, we process the chips we want to make. Uh, that comes from design. Design is right after here, but it comes from, from the, the design. And that's packaged into chips. That's the, the value chain. And in, on top of that, we can also add uh, companies that make tools to process semiconductors. It's not here, but there is also an important uh, element uh, there. And so there are different types of industrial actors in the, in the field. Not everybody does the same. Some are specialized on the material substrate side. Some only do the technology, CMOS technology, for example, foundries. Some do only the design. They are fabless, and they uh, ask foundries to make the product for them. Some only do the packaging. And finally, some do everything, and even more than what's uh, indicated here. So it's integrated design manufacturers. And so here are some examples of companies you may already know and uh, to explain what, what they are. Uh, Infineon, for example, is IDM, so doing technology, design, and chips, and so on. I'll, I won't go into the detail here. But we will look now okay. at our three companies and what, what they do, how they position here. So Soritech is, uh, is based at the beginning of the value chain, not at the first level, but at the <coughs> second one. And uh, we are, are providing the soil on which the electronic components are uh, fabricated. So basically, uh, this innovative soil provides unique performance for cars, uh, telephone, for uh, uh, all the uh, smart objects. And uh, here I have some examples of, uh, of the, um, the substrates that we provide, RFSY. POI, FDSY, and SmartSeq that will be presented in the afternoon or tomorrow morning. And I have a small video to explain that this soil, these substrates come uh, from a unique technology. So we have the SmartCut <coughs> here process with two wafers, the wafer A that is oxidized and implanted and then reversed upside down and banded on the wafer B and then split it. At the end of the day, you have the SOI wafer, and the wafer A comes a new wafer A because it can be recycled several times. So when you have two different wafers with two different quality, uh, I mean, you have a wafer A that can give a very good quality uh, active layer on top of which you have the components that are created. A buried oxide that is beneath the active layer and the base wafer and the base wafer that can provide other functionalities. Here for Soltec, and maybe it's yours. OK, thank you. So for ST, Oops. so for ST, ST is an IDM. So IDM means Integrated Device Manufacturer. So we cover from there to there. So, <laughs> OK, so. First thing, we design some basic elements of the technology, for example, the transistor or a diode. Okay, we can make, so this is very simple device. We can make also more complex device. Here you have a, an example of a, a pixel, a pixel for a camera. Okay, so we have a toolbox here and we, have to, and we give this toolbox to some people who are designers. So they use this toolbox and they make device. Okay, once we have done that, you have to manufacture this device. So here, so we have a map of the device, so we come back here, and here we manufacture the device. Okay, so we have a wafer full of device. Very good. Then it's still not a chip, so you have to go this way, here, and then you cut the wafer into pieces, 
when you put a package on it with many wires, and at the end, you have a dice. So in ST, we try to do to cover the full chain uh, because we are making our own technology. So this, this is very important. And one additional point, so you see that the bar is a little bit extended on the left because recently, and thanks to a Swedish company, which was, was called Northstel, that we bought uh, in two years ago, we are now in the business of the SIC, S-I-C wafer, which is a special technology for power component. Okay, I will, I will come back to that after that. Thank you. And finally, uh, for Linred, we do even more. We are <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we're not <laughs> as many people as ST or Soltech, but we do even more. We start, we start from the bulk material for some of the product we make because it's a very weird or special semiconductors, two six semiconductors. Uh, not many companies do that, and we want to be sure uh, that the, that we we have the best material and it's available when we need it. So that's why uh, it starts from from the left. So we make substrate out of that. We do the process. We do uh, the, the the design as well, and we. We do the packaging, and packaging can be very, very different depending on the on the product. That's the packaging of um, microbolometer component, the one that you maybe uh, some of you saw this morning. Uh, so that's this type of chip, but it can go to this type of packaging with uh, uh, a cooler here for high performance infrared imaging. So that's what we do. Markets. Now, markets. Markets. So, not so much figures, so many figures, but just a view of the global market of microelectronic, just you to, for you to understand where, who does what and what is needed. It's a complex slide, but uh, okay, I will not go into the detail. Just to, to have you in mind. So, here you have uh, the market share of the different technologies. Uh, what we can say? 20% of the market is the microprocessor. Microprocessor is the main core of your phone, or of your PC, or of, of a server. On this specific point, so frankly speaking, there is no actor in Europe doing that. So this is an issue, and this is the first input that was used to, to say we need to make a chip act, because there is nothing in Europe to do that. No design, no manufacture. Everything is made in Azure. Okay. Then we have another part, which is memories, DRAM. Same thing. Okay. Nothing in Europe. Absolutely nothing. So these two parts cover 50% of the market. The issue, coming back to the chip act, there is nothing in Europe. This is kind of an issue. Okay. Then for the rest, of the product, so 50%, here Europe is very strong. So we are dealing with embedded processing. So embedded processing is something using microcontroller. So the difference between microprocessor, microcontroller is a small microprocessor, but with many function, function inside, especially non-volatile memory. Flash, some kind of flash. So this is very useful for many, many objects. So this is one thing that Infineon, ST, NXP do in Europe. Then there is energy. So we need some special component for energy, for cars, for engine, and so on and so on. So here we will find some specific silicon technology or GAN or SIC technology. Okay, then we have sensors. So sensors for uh, infrared sensor, but also for face ID sensor of the telephone, car sensor and so on, radar and so on. And then we have also the communication, so everything dealing with the radio frequency, 5G, 6G and so on and so on. So that is to say that, okay, Europe is weak, definitely, on the two first part. This is true. Now, we are not weak here, because we are making everything, but we are not doing in, a, in enough quantity. Okay, so this so the chip act at the end begin with the, two, the first bullet here, out, here uh, on the top, but we need also also to reinforce all this part in Europe. 
because Europe needs more than that. And we have everything to do it. Okay. Just another example, it's a complex slide, but I will not go into the detail. Into the detail. Here it is a car. A car, and we can see with a with good color, you can see also what is needed in the car. So you, you see that in the car, so we need processor for the central uh, calculator, calculator unit, but not so many. Hein. Every, every other component, is, uh, we are able to do it in Europe. Once again, we are not able to do it in a sufficient quantity. Okay. Then, one said, okay, we need to produce some components in Europe more than today. And we need some young people, fresh mind, <laughs> and so on. Uh, so, join us, of course. Uh, so, just for you to have in mind, uh, this, the, the semiconductor sector is very, let's say, attractive and very, is moving very fast. Uh, it is one of the most R&D sectors in industrial, for some, because it's very, 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 very complex. So we need many, many kind of jobs. There are almost 200,000 uh, direct jobs and more than 1 million jobs in Europe. So this is huge. And there are, and we have a dedicated slide on, on that part, there are many, many types of doing microelectronics in a, in a semiconductor company. Just for, to give you an idea, here it is the expansion of a different society, a different company last year. So, Soytec plus 154, Linred plus 40, of course, ST is bigger, so plus 1,100, okay, in Europe last year, and two more, two than 2,000 worldwide. Okay. This figure does not count the, the people we replace because they are in retirement. So we, we recruit more than that. Just the expansion of the technology, of, uh, of the company. And we had a special thing here for uh, Swedish because there is a, a special push to, to motivate Swedish people to, to work on it. So this you can, cons uh, you can see your, uh, the local paper, which is electronic something here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, and with the title with uh, ST. It's still with some word I don't understand. But okay, <laughs> but, okay. Uh, so definitely, uh, and this is a crucial for the cheap parts, we will say it again. We can build factory, but we cannot build factory without people. People working on it, people working on design, working, inventing the technology. So this is key. This is key if Europe wants to succeed in this story. Hein? Then, okay. And the uh, things are ongoing. This is first part of Chipsacks, where you will have several examples. So if you read the newspaper, you can see, you have seen that in July, that we announced, the President Macron here, France, announced uh, a big extension of the Kroll site. Kroll site is the main manufacturing site of ST in France. And will double the capacity of the of of site, which is a huge, 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 uh, story. So uh, we, will, uh, we will need at least at least more than 1,000 1, people to work in this new factory. Okay. So it is moving and the, it is very dynamic. And also very recently, since uh, last week, I think, and we also have something in Catania, in uh, Italy, where uh, we launch a first uh, a first factory to build SIC wafer which was before done in, uh, so in Nordstel, Sweden, huh, because we, we bought and we bought the company and the know-how, and we export this know-how to this, this factory. So thanks to Nordstel, at the end, huh, uh, we are able to build a real factory in Catania. Huh, this is good. Huh? So also here, there is some uh, new factory which are emerging in the country, or in Europe. So there is some other example for Soitech. Thank you. I rebound on the, what Jean-Christophe just said about the silicon carbide. Silicon carbide <coughs> is a key material provided by the US and Japan, 99% mm -hmm. of this material, and it is key for electrification. Uh, with Soitec, with the smart cut technology, we can take one very expensive uh, uh, wafer of silicon carbide and put it split it now that you know by heart what is the smart cut, 10 times 
even more than 10 times on another uh, handle wafer, another base wafer. So that's the smart SIC history, and this history started in 2018 with a discussion with Audi. And you see that in 2022, in March, we have a, 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 a first stone, a foundation stone of a new factory, and this is ongoing here in, uh, in Berna. That will be a 2,500 meter square, and it will be ramping up in 2023. And we need engineers to come uh, here also, 400 jobs uh, will be created. So just some slide to just try to summarize, you, give, you can pick up what you prefer at the end, uh, the kind of job we can have in this kind of company. Uh, so once again, we are looking for people, everybody here. Uh, so we have plenty kind of job. So for an R&D job, okay, engineer, semiconductor, material semiconductor, cryogenic, electronics, optics, packaging, many things. Design, so the people who use the technology to make chips. So engineer architect, integrator system, engineer design analog, uh, engineer package, conception digital, and so on and so on. Many jobs. Manufacturing, so we have to build, of course. So we are, we are in the production area, so we need engineer and technician people to make the factory works and to control the process. And, it's very, and in microelectronics, it is very sharp. It is very difficult, you know, by heart. Huh? So, engineer in the defectivity, process, equipment, automatization, AI, a lot of AI is needed to exploit all the data we collect and to, to have a better, to have a robust, to, to develop the robustness of a process, which is key in the microelectronics also. Okay, many transversal jobs. So, purchasing, sourcing. Uh, test engineer, uh, and so on, data scientist, and so on. Okay. And of course, we have also support job, with customer support, because we have customer, hein, we said something. Uh, communication, finance, training, and so on. So this is true for all the three companies here. We need all this kind of job at the different scale, but we need everybody to do it. And especially for young people, uh, please, do not go directly to finance. If you make study, <laughs> no, no, okay. If you make study in material and science, please take a job in material and science. We need that and we miss that. This is key. And if you want to have a job, take it this opportunity. You will have. <laughs> you will have. Come, come, come to see us and you will have a job. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Just one more information, just regarding ST, we have today, in just in France, 1,000 open jobs. And it's difficult to cover. So if you want to go and crawl, which is a nice area, come. It's very good. Okay. <laughs> I stop here. <laughs> uh, because microelectronic is fun. Yes, it is very fun. <laughs> Makes sense to come. So why is it fun? So Firstly, it's really fun because you participate to uh, an evolution that uh, is unprecedented in the mankind. And this, the reason is that with the Moore's law, uh, uh, we change everything every 2.5 years, every three years, and we reduce by two uh, the dimensions of, of the circuits every two years and a half. So basically, uh, to give you an example, uh, here's the uh, Apollo 11 uh, uh, room for the moon landing, and here's the smartphone. You have much more electronics in the smartphones. And when we arrived uh, at, uh, in ST or in, uh, in Soitec 20 years ago, maybe that we, w we had smartphones like this. <laughs> <laughs> so you see the, the revolution is ongoing. And really, uh, this is a sector where you can model it model your future, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, take part in this. Okay, many examples of, of that. Uh, at the end of the day, as it was really explained, at the end of the day, the components are everywhere and will be more and more. Okay, so uh, yeah, become an actor uh, and, and come in this, uh, in this story. Very important, because we are all actors of that, uh, that's th these two points. Uh, we act for greener world. 
And these two bullet points are taken for uh, the, the, the European Green Deal by Ursula von der Leyen in 2020. Digital technologies are a critical enabler for attaining the sustainability goals of the Green Deal, meaning zero net emission by 2050. Artificial intelligence, 5G, cloud and edge computing and the Internet of Things can accelerate and maximize the impact of policies to deal with climate change. Yes, that's true. We reduce the size. We can reduce by a factor of 20 the consumption of uh, the computers, and it will be explained by Philippe, uh, by Jean Christophe, etc. But the problem is that the user, at the end of the day, when he has a bandwidth and, uh, and can use a lot of electronic, a lot of devices around him, well, uh, at, even if the, the 5G is consuming less than the 4G, uh, you have a lot of data exchanged. So we have to reverse bend this, this trend of electronics consumption uh, down. And for that, low consumption semiconductor technologies are urgently required, FDSOI, etc. AI everywhere to reduce, also optimize the process, data compression, novel compute architecture, and all this we are working on. So coming into this, you will, you, you will take part in this, in, this, in this story also. Just to give you two examples of how we bring green innovation, green innovation we call it. Uh, so uh, at, the, at the left hand side you have the silicon carbide. It is a key material for electrification of vehicles. Here on the top you have the baseline. What is the state of the art today? An American bull of, smart, uh, of uh, car silicon carbide. And to make this bull, you have a time of process of 10 days at 2,200 degrees. Out of this bull, you cut it, and you have 50 wafers of silicon carbide. With the smart seek, you, you take one, uh, one of this, uh, this wafer, and you take a poly silicon carbide here, OK? which gives other interest, lower, a lower resistivity, etc. And you bond it, you have a smart seek wafer which rejects four times less CO2 than the, uh, than the initial, uh, than the state of the art. That's what we propose in, at the manufacturing level. And I, I, I will let Philippe go into the more detail about that, but the FDSOI and the RFSOI technologies are really frugal technologies. And today, we evaluate the economy, uh, the reduction of CO2, uh, representing the consumption of a one million inhabitant city. So that's, that's really key. Thank you. And it is fun also. <laughs> so uh, there is very important work to do to indeed reduce power consumption of semiconductors. But there is also things you can do with chips. It's help monitor the environment, the climate, uh, to make the right decision. So here, on, we, have, we have detectors in satellites to monitor climate, to monitor environment. And if you want to have more information, you can go to LinRed uh, website where we have uh, webinars about, about the topic. Uh, and here in the center, what you see is uh, methane uh, CH4. Uh, leak that's visualized with a multispectral infrared sensor that uh, we developed. So that's another way of contributing to the environment, uh, <coughs> making the tools that allow us to monitor exactly what's going on. So it makes sense because of the environment. It is fun because of the environment. It is fun because it's an unprecedented evolution. But it is fun because we talk to each other, you see. <laughs> we are not uh, alone in, the, in our office. We create the ecosystem. And uh, we, so we take ST at the center, at the technology <laughs> level. We work with designers. We work with uh, system makers. And at the end of the day, all this uh, ecosystem of uh, universities and academics around us that, uh, that helps us to go uh, forward. I mean, the ecosystem is really the vector of translation from the technology to the application, I like to say that. And that is realized through European projects 
So I take advantage of to present two projects that are led by Suitec. For instance, this one, Ocean 12, is finished since the uh, 30th of uh, September this year. And it's about FDSOI technology preparing the 12 nanometer node. Uh, and really, we have a new radar on 22 FDX that is qualified for automotive by Bosch in this radar, who in this project we have the 18 nanometer FDSOI first eyepiece with ST, more than 1,000 high rings through this ecosystem. So you see this ecosystem, it's always material, equipment, chips, and system and application. I represent the academics here in the cloud, uh, Hopper. We have another one uh, that is of interest of, for you because Sweden is one of of the key partners, and uh, I have the chance to have a demonstrator armed by Ericsson with uh, Lund University and Frederick with Lyon. We will have a presentation uh, this afternoon, I think. Uh, so this is beyond 5. This is to go beyond the 5G. And we provide the substrates. We, we, su we support the technology leaders, uh, ST and Global Foundries, and they provide uh, that technology to uh, the, the demonstrator owners, narrowband IoT, V2X, contactless USB, the 5G low power beam forming base station that is led by Ericsson, automotive radar, car interior radar. And all of these demonstrators, they cover a full range of, of full spectrum from 0 0.7 gigahertz to 120 gigahertz. So that's really interesting because it brings, uh, yeah, connections between the different stages, the different levels of the value chain. And so this is another example of uh, uh, IPCI-induced project, which is called Helios. And Bruno, who is here, will uh, present results of, about this project tomorrow. It's very interesting uh, results for in-cabin and uh, environment around the car monitoring by infrared uh, sensors. So, and you see 11 European companies involved, uh, many countries, so this is the type of uh, project that IPCI enables as well. So now we have convinced all of you that it is fun. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what about the, the financing, I mean, the, the funding? So, okay, so that's the TRL level, technology, readiness level, from one, the basic principle. Number four is the proof of concept. Number nine is the production. Okay, so years after years, and since 1984, Europe has provided framework programs. And you can see these framework programs, they provide a funding, and a European funding, up to the TRL5 little bit. Basically, that's that. The, late, the last one is Horizon 2020, Horizon Europe, before it was FP7, something like this. In 2014, Ursula van der Leyen said, we have the valley of death here after TRL 6 and 7. We need to, to provide support to the companies to, to cross this valley of death. And that was the key enabling technology tools, or the, in other words, pilot lines. And that's the Excel... GU projects that take here the the uh, th that appear here uh, and now it is called KDT. That's a three-party funding. You have the partner, you have European funding, and you have France funding, or France or the member states. For instance, in Beyond Five, that's an Excel project. You have European funding accumulated to uh, to Swedish or French funding. Now. In 2018, we have the first IPCI coming in, and here, this funding is to go beyond on the tier level, I mean, to, to go to the first industrialization deployment. So, of course, you have no European money, of course. Europe cannot fund a, 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 a fab in Germany, otherwise uh, Italian would not be happy, etc. So, but it's, it's Europe stamps. That's the IPCI, Europe stamps that this is notified for all the partners, this project is not disturbing the competitive, the, uh, the competition, not distortion of the competition. So uh, that's IPCI, microelectronics, is running 
since 19, 2018 and finishing in 2022 for France. For Italy, it's lasting a little bit more. And there is a new one, the IPCI MECT, that will be notified normally uh, in the uh, first quarter of uh, 2023. Mm -hmm. And that will enable to go uh, a little bit beyond. I think uh, you, we have one slide explaining the two IPCI content mm -hmm. just after. And now we have, we have on top of that the CHIPS Act. Uh, it will uh, be voted by the Parliament uh, in March 2023, a little bit the uh, same period as the notification of the IPCI MECT. And that's really, uh, yeah, the idea of the CHIPS Act is really the sovereignty of Europe. Uh, that's re yeah, they realize that we need chips uh, and we need chips for Europe. That's the pillar one with three key pilot lines, FDSOI. FinFET and uh, uh, get all right for two nanometer and packaging. So that's for uh, basically uh, the, 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 the cake of the three big RTOs, CLAT uh, for FDSOI, IMEC for the FinFET and packaging. That's the pillar one, what we need. And that's the, there is another pillar, the pillar two, which aims to provide the security of the supply and in which uh, we will find open EU uh, foundries, uh, SIG, GAN, etc. And, uh, uh, and, and that, that, that's, uh, that, that's the first of a kind uh, environment. I don't think this is the last slide, but okay. Okay, uh, this CHIPS Act englobes everything and it's a total 43 billion euro. Uh, and that's, that's it. I mean, the story continues, and basically the story uh, is always going forward to more capacity in Europe. But the CHIPS Act aims basically to multiply by two the share of Europe, and that's a challenging point. Yeah. I let Jean-Christophe... So regarding that. coming back to the CHIPS Act origin, so here is uh, just yeah, to see this, this graph representing the, the capacity of Europe to produce chips. Okay? So it has the situation here in uh, so in Europe is uh, is where the second place. there this here black green the dark green so in 1990 okay Europe represents 44 percent of the worldwide capacity and then we go there and today Europe is only eight percent and of course the main main actors are Taiwan and China. So when there is a COVID crisis, we realize that this is an issue because uh, we are no more serving. People, here, here there is a problem in the supply chain, definitely. And we cannot stay like this with 8% of the production. We cannot serve our, our own needs and we, can, we, we, does no, we, are, not, uh, we are no more an uh, important actor on the market worldwide. So this is a real issue, and coming back to what I was saying before, especially regarding microprocessors, because we, 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 we do nothing. Okay, so today Europe is less than 10% of the worldwide world, world market, which is, which is a pity, plainly speaking. Okay, then also in the parallel there are some many new mega trends that we need so 5G AI autonomous vehicle industry 4.0 edge computing work clean healthcare smart home and uh, uh, virtual reality uh, so for this component we need for this application we need new components and more more chips and to be produced in Europe if you want to have a kind of sovereignty Okay, so what is the plan? The plan is simple. So today, Europe is 10%. So the plan of the cheap tax is to go to 20% of the market share by 30, uh, 2030. But in the same time, the, mar the market will grow. It will double. So today, the, mar the global market is around 500 billion. In 2030, it will be 1,000 billion. So if we want to manage to, to double our market share, we, will, we, have to, we have to multiply the capacity in Europe by four. And this is a kind of challenge. Huh? Okay. 
so you probably know that there is some discussion. So there is the story of uh, Soitek, Lin Red, and ST in Kroll. So we, we, we had something, but it's not enough. And there are also stories regarding Intel coming in Germany, Italy, and France, for example. And there are some other stories that, uh, that we need to do. So this is key, and once again, to do that, we need people. Huh? Building factory alone, uh, very good, but uh, with no people, uh, no factory. Huh? So uh, once again, uh, plenty of job here. So <laughs> this is the challenge of the chip act. This is a big challenge, and I think Europe needs that, because otherwise we, and especially with all what is happening now, with uh, tension with uh, China, Taiwan, US, U uh, Ukraine, Re Russia, and so on. Uh, it's quite difficult, huh? and we realize that we are not, uh, we cannot do alone. We cannot stay like that. So this is a good thing. So now we have to do it. Okay. You. Thank you. And so taking a step back and coming back to the reason why we are we are here, why this event about uh, why the, the semiconductor rendezvous about the IPCI. So this is the structure of one of the first slides with the technology fields uh, that I described at first, energy efficient chips, power semiconductor sensors, advanced optical equipment and component compound materials. So here are Soitec, ST Microelectronic and LinRed uh, field where we, we uh, we had project in IPCI, and we will show you uh, during these two days the result of this project. And so you see that four mem member states only at first, Austria joined two years after the beginning of uh, IPCI. So it's possible even if you don't start in the IPCI to later on come on board of uh, IPCI. And there is a new IPCI uh, being defined right now. The structure is a little, a little bit different. It's not anymore organized with uh, technologies. It's more organized with uh, work streams, with a, a logic sense. The, the logic is we sense, we think, we act, and we communicate. That's the, uh, the, the four pillars of the IPCI. And so uh, in this IPCI. Sweden is not yet present. Hope it will be someday. There will there is still some possibilities. I mean, like for uh, the first IPCI, uh, there is about a one to two years delay uh, possible for a country to join uh, IPCI. Uh, anyway, even if this doesn't happen, we are here also to uh, to make sure that we can collaborate. Have project with uh, Sweden uh, enterprise universities, even if Sweden is not in the IPCI. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So if this plan is supposed to succeed, we're in 2022 today, and by 2030, Europe's going to have 20% market share of one trillion dollar market. That's the plan, right? So in eight years, we're going to do that. And the capital asset investment in semiconductor technology is at least a dollar per revenue, right? So that means you have to invest 200 billion dollars about between now and the end of in eight years' time, correct? I think you have yep. a good figure. Mm -hmm. yes. huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and the money, the 50 billion. So from the European Union, mm. uh, I don't know if that money is going to go to revenue generating technologies, but there's still, it, suppose it does, you still have a $150 billion dollar gap, right? Mm. Yes. Right. Yes. Yep. But private company has to, to bring this money. Huh? Mm -hmm. So they are, a private company will bring this money. So there is a participation of the states, of Europe, and so on, and to to incentive company to do it. But is there a, I mean, it, it's AG, I mean, it takes a lot of money, right? Yes. So that's a lot, it's a big gap. Yes, right. for example, it's a, 
that's a matter of money, if you want to build a 5 nanometer fab, I'm sorry? if you want to build a 5 nanometer CMOS fab, FinFET fab, right. it's 20 billion euros. Yeah, I know, very you know that. So, so they need, so they, the, the plan is to, to help uh, Intel, for example, for to do that, and to fund them at 40%. This is the plan. Yes. Uh, okay. from, from who? Analysis from who? From, uh, from, from whom? Who makes this analysis? From the Europe. From the Europe, Europe, probably. We don't know. The Chips Act. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Huge. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what Europe has to be realized also is that uh, of the origin of the chip act is to serve the European market. Yeah. But frankly speaking, the European market does not use microelectronic. There is no company, almost no, no company, who makes cards in Europe. If you take a company like Schneider in France or, or Le Grand, they manufacture everything in China. So the customers of the microelectronic are not in Europe. This is an issue too of this picture, because, uh, okay, microtonic is one piece, but the people who use it, they are not manufacturing this thing in Europe. This is an issue too. And this is part of the equation, because we want to, we can build factory in Europe, but the customers are not, in here, not here. Mm -hmm. Because the final users are here. Very good. So this is also an issue of this, uh, this story, and everybody has to, to make a step. Huh? So we build factory, we take a risk to build a factory in Kroll, for example, and we expect that French or European company will buy what we are doing here in Europe. But maybe they will continue to buy to TSMC. Hein? Yeah. Yeah, this is an issue. At least they have the choice. <laughs> But they have a choice. Yeah. Okay. That's a complex. But it's very complex. Yeah. But the, the idea is good, once again, because regarding, once again, the microprocessor and so on, this is an issue. We are not able to, to, to provide anything in Europe. We hope to be more successful than the plan in 2014. It yeah. was already to double the capacity <laughs> yes. of, uh, of Europe. Yeah. Mm -hmm.